This is my in-depth review of the Diatone Blade 150. This is slowly becoming one of my favorite quads, mainly because of its small size. The small size allows it to carry with you in the car easily. It can fit up on the dashboard if you don't mind it sliding around. It can uh, fly through tight spots, and when people see this, they think, oh, how cute, not, oh my gosh, are you spying on me, or oh my gosh, you're gonna run into me and cut me up. These blades are only three inch blades, and so they're not much of a threat uh, physically to people. This is a 4 inch blade, this is a 4045, and I actually cut these 3 inch blades down from this one. And so just to give you a little bit of size comparison on how much I had to cut off, which isn't very much. And here's a, a 5 inch propeller compared to a 3 inch propeller. Now if you're going to actually fly this and you're going to use 3 inch propellers, you can't use 2S batteries. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate because they're a little bit smaller, but 2S batteries can barely get this thing off the ground And when I did get it off the ground, I almost had to have it at full throttle just to maintain a hover It was not nearly enough power now some people have been saying to try and use these um, 500 milliamp hour batteries or um, the 800 milliamp hour batteries and I'd like to try this one, but this one is actually Bad it only lasts for about 10 minutes or, or not about 10 seconds I was flying that one on my uh, airplanes for a while. Now, I, these are the ones I've been using. These are the Nanotech uh, 1000s, and they're good for the 45 to 90 discharge. And with these, I'm getting a uh, high nine minutes, like 9.30 or better. And, uh, and that's with flying, um, doing some speed runs, and some uh, flipping, and things like that. Because of the small size, you have to use small ESCs. In this case, I'm using DYS 20 amp ESCs. These are the Opto ESCs, so they don't have any BECs built into them to provide 5 volts back to the uh, flight board. Now, if you're going to use these, <laughs> you have to be careful that these don't actually touch your motors. Because if you get it too close and it touches your motor, you'll get this kind of action going on like this. And that's just because I had the ESC too close and it just started rubbing on it. Well, to get these to fit correctly, you, can, you don't really have much room on this side of the of the ESC, so yeah, I, what I did was I actually unsoldered the uh, motor, uh, the original wires that came on here, and the motor wires from the motor they, act, they come back here, go around the post, and they come back into the ESC uh, from this direction rather than from the outside direction, and that just allows it to push this back a little bit, get it away from the motor, and to keep the ESCs out on the arms, just because there's not a lot of room inside for nearly anything in here. Now some people have talked about using the, the uh, bigger board that has all the ESCs built into it and putting it inside, but I haven't figured out uh, which one they're using or anything like that. But these are the 20 amp ESCs. And the reason I got the 20 amp is because they're the same weight and size as a 16 amp. So heck, why not put those on here? And also these motors, I think, draw about eight amps. So they're never gonna draw too much power for uh, these ESCs to handle. These ESCs are flashed with BL Heli and I have the one shot enabled on them. The one shot essentially what it does is when the motor is spinning and you let off the throttle, the, the one shot actually tries to slow down the uh, spinning of the motor to match your throttle and that just mostly helps you with the uh, drops so that you can, you can get down under obstacles a little quicker without having to have more of a glide, a glide type of feeling to your uh, motors. For the flight controller, I'm using a Mini CC3D. Now I have this mounted in here with some double-sided uh, foam tape. I got one piece down the middle and then one on either end because it's kind of wide on this back end uh, where the screws go into the case. So no, it's held on there with the foam tape and that's also to help with some uh, lowering some vibrations. But I think if I was going to do this again, I'd actually take it out of this case and put some kind of plastic piece across the bottom, something real thin just to mount it to. And uh, the reason I didn't do that this time is because it has these big holes here on the sides. And so the only thing it could mount to was just this middle, middle plate. And I kind of thought of the plastic plate idea a little too late. But anyway, the nice thing about a CC3D like this is that it has a wide voltage range of voltage input. It can take 5 volts up to 15 volts of direct input to the board. Now if you're using like a NASA 32 or a, C or a KK2 board, those have to have a 5 volt input. So you have to have a BEC coming off of your ESC to power it, or you have to have a separate BEC inside to, to 
lower your voltage down to 5 volts so you don't fry your board. Like I said, this one can support up to 15 volts. So what I did is I actually soldered it on back here directly onto where the battery plug goes in and it goes up and powers the um, CC3D directly without having to have a separate BEC or anything in between. Because there's not a lot of room in here for a low voltage alarm, I have this FBVS-01 in here. This stands for uh, Free Sky Voltage Sensor, I think is what it stands for. Essentially what it does, it connects into your D4R2, if you have one, a D4R2, and it also connects back here to the battery connection here, and it reads the battery voltage coming off of the battery and sends that information into the D4R2, and the D4R2 using telemetry can send that information back down to the Tyrannus so you can uh, have low voltage alarm on your transmitter instead of relying on this thing carrying one around or a piezo buzzer if you knew how to hook it up to the uh, CC3D to do that, which I, I don't even know if you can really do that or not. But this is my answer to uh, figuring out when my batteries are getting low. The Blade 150 does not come with landing gear. So if you notice on here, if it'll focus, I'm starting to get some scratches on my uh, screws here, my mounting screws, because I'm landing on concrete too much. So if you're going to be flying this, your better option is to land in the grass or just catch it out of the air. The blades, you know, are this size and they don't feel like much of a threat to my fingers when they come in, although that's probably just a misconception on my side. but. They don't feel too dangerous, and I can put my hand out pretty easily and just drop it into my hand by cutting the throttle, and it usually does pretty well. Now, if it had some landing gear, that would be nice, but the only thing is, you know, with a quad this size, anything you put on this just adds more weight to it and helps drag it down so that the performance starts to lack. So, uh, I kind of question whether or not I really, really would even recommend any kind of landing gear for this thing. One nice perk of the Mini CC3D is that it comes with this antenna holder. And here I got my D4R facing backward and with the antennas coming out the front. And they go through the uh, holes here in the front and then up into these antenna wires. And uh, these, like I said, this actually comes with the Mini CC3D along with these little antenna holders. So it gives you a good way to mount your antenna. And when you mount these antennas, they're supposed to be 90 degrees away from each other. So this actually works pretty well. The other thing, it's nice, it, it kind of helps a little bit with orientation because I know the antennas are up in the front. And I ended up zip tying this down through a couple of the uh, little holes here to help hold it in place along with some double-sided foam tape that it came with. So here's the quadcopter and this has everything on it so it's ready to fly. And we'll see what it weighs in at. Weighs in about 141.9 grams. And that's with the uh, little pieces of Velcro on the top to hold the battery in place and this uh, Velcro piece on top to hold the battery down so it doesn't fall off. And uh, let's see what these Nanotex 1000s weigh in at. If I can get it to not touch the ground. It weighs in about 94.5 grams. Now if I was using this battery uh, instead, this would weigh in at about half the weight of 50 grams and that makes sense this is a 500 versus a thousand but the more the less weight you can get onto the quad the better performance you're going to get out of it the fiberglass version of this frame comes with a built-in power distribution board and as i showed earlier here's the battery connection it solders right back in here to these two main connections on the back and then all the escs have their own little pair of uh solder points for their um, escs to connect to and there's two up here in the front and on these um the wiring, what I did is I actually had to cut down the motor wires some because they were way too long. And the ESC wires, uh, I cut them down so that they would fit nicely into here. And what I actually did is I, I tried to leave enough room on here to where if I get some longer arms, I can, I can pull these arms out and without having to unsolder anything, go ahead and extend this out a little bit and maybe be able to run 4-inch propellers instead of 3-inch propellers. And you can see how this is just barely clearing that post, which is fine. All, that's all it has to do is just barely clear it and it'll be... Uh, enough to keep it in the air and not crash. Instead of using clean flight, I used Open Pilot to configure my CC3D. Every time I've used this, I feel like it is rock solid, and I have just as good an experience with this as I do clean flight in terms of ease of programming my uh, flight board. Now, once you've gone through the vehicle setup wizard, there's nothing really special in there I did except for I'm using PPM with my D4R2 receiver, and I'm using the uh, one shots on my ESCs. At the end of the vehicle configuration wizard, you'll get to the open pilot setup wizard screen. It looks like this. Now on this screen, the one I've always chosen is the Blackout B330. I don't know why, but this thing seems to work very well on every quad I've done. 
Even this quad in the, in the video, the Blade 150, I'm using the Blackout B330. It's awesome. That's the one you should choose if you want to make it fly like mine. <laughs> and uh, the only other thing I had to change in here after that was my flips were taking about 30 feet to complete. I go up way high, in, way high in the air and start to flip, and it'd be 30 feet around until it finally came back around. I could catch it again. So on this screen, in the uh, stabilization screen, I came over here and I set the rate mode up to snappy. Rate mode means that uh, the mode that I'm flying in. When I'm flying in rate mode, I want the sticks to be more sensitive. If you're flying in attitude mode, you can change your attitude up to snappy or whatever you want. But the rate, I moved it up to 450 and that's how I'm able to do about the one to two foot flips. Other than that, there weren't any other changes that I made in this. So the, the setup on the uh, open pilot side was very easy. If you're using a Tyrannus, then I can show you some of the settings that I set in here to uh, help with my tuning. The uh, first thing I did is I came in here and I set up the um, Expos here. And these are the Expos I'm running. 40 on my rudder, 50 on my elevator, and 50 on my aileron. And the reason for this is because I'm, I'm setting the rates up higher than normal so that way I can do flips, you know, at low levels without having to, you know, without having to have the sensitivity so much in the middle as just mostly on the extremes. The other thing I set up in here were the low voltage alarms and this is kind of how I set them up. Uh, here's This is where I set A2 to 1.26 and 8 or A is less than X on these but A is less than 10.03 and this is my low and this is my critical. Then I said um, just so that it doesn't beep off, keep beeping when it when I just plug it in and it's at zero volts. I put this one in here to say A is greater than X, where A2 is greater than seven volts. So that way when I turn it on and it says zero volts, it doesn't say, oh, my battery's low, battery critical. It's because I don't want to do that. So then here for L4, I said L1 and L3. So it's less than 10.26 and higher than seven. That's my low voltage. And this one here, I said, uh, less than or it's L2 and L3 and so this this one equates out to my critical alarm so up here on the next page I have uh, L4 set to play a track called battery low and I have L5 set to play a track called battery critical and it, this one repeats every four seconds this one repeats every 15 seconds if you aren't getting a lot of time between these two then you can go back to the previous page and increase your um, low voltage here to something higher maybe 10.3 or 10.4 depending on what you think you need for yours we'll do one more comparison and then I'll get to some flight footage this is the blade 150 this is a ZMR 250 and when you compare the two of them this thing just looks massive compared to this. Now I know these were the small ones when people started off on the 450s and the 550 size quads, but now like I said, I really think these mini quads are gonna come around and start taking over a lot of the uh, hobby. S but before that can happen, they're gonna have to start getting motors that are reasonably priced and propellers that are reasonably priced and actually made so that people don't have to cut them down. And I've heard rumors that they're going to be uh, 1306, or sorry, 1106 motors being released soon with their uh, own um, sized uh, propellers. So hopefully that'll be soon and <laughs> we'll all be happy. Anyway, let's get to some flight footage and then we'll uh, do some summary thoughts. Here we are getting ready to go. I got the uh, battery connected on here, the 1000 milliamp hour battery, and it's connected like this. It's well out of the way of the props both of them so here we go put it not in auto level mode and we'll see what happens and it flies very very smooth it's very locked in when i, I give it some yaw left and right and you can see how it just it goes back and forth and just stops immediately when i let go of the stick so let's get some flying on this there goes the full throttle. Boy, the orientation is hard to keep like this. It does flips pretty easily. I'll get, and uh, with the tuning I have set up, I crank the rates up and uh, it makes the flips pretty easy to do. Give it a little bit of upward momentum before you flip and it, it does it pretty well. I can do the rolls, flips real easy.
but it has a very, very locked in feel to it. But yeah, like I said, you can catch this out of the air pretty easily. So there's really not much need for landing gear if you don't have to have it. Uh, the, the screws on the bottom where my thumb is sitting right now, it gets a little bit warm, but the motors themselves, let me put this controller down. The motors themselves are, you know, not warm at all. The ESCs aren't even, I can't even feel if there's any heat on them or not. But the screws on the bottom, for whatever reason, feel a little warm. <laughs> but that's it, just warm, not, not hot. So it has no problem doing flips. And again, here I'm flying about, oh, a little over half throttle to keep it hovering, maybe a little about half. Doing flips with it is like no problem at all. Whoa. And this can do long flips, it can do short flips, just because the sensitivity is set correctly. So here we'll try to do a long flip. Long catch and a short one. There's a little short one. A long. And a, and a long one. Three. Woo. But it has plenty of get up and go for thrust for 3S. I and mean, that's, that's 3S. Now if you did 4S, you may have to get a BEC to lower the voltage going into the CC3D board because it can only handle 15 volts. And I have the little LED decoration boards on the bottom. You can kind of see them red and white. That's just hovering. It does pretty well. Four minutes. I should have learned my lesson flying over concrete. <laughs> After the Hayes Hobby Shop crashing in their parking lot. This isn't as fast as my 250 with the six inch props, but this is plenty fast for neighborhood flying or maybe picnic flying. Something where you really don't, you shouldn't really be flying as fast as you can with the 250. This one works pretty well. Anyway, for being as cute as it is, this thing, this thing rocks all over a Hubson and uh, it actually acts like a real quad. The flips and things that you have to do are not little switches where you flip the switch and it flips for you. You have to do the switch, do the flips yourself. And also I'm flying in, in uh, acro mode or, you know, with no auto level, but by default, I set the, uh, the, uh, the switch here to my uh, auto level off and my auto level on. And even an auto level, it does pretty good. It kind of, this one anyway, it might just need some tuning, but has a tendency to come, want to come back and right. But yeah, who knows? I just flip it, flip it, flip it off into acro mode and it's fine. But anyway, this is the Diatone Blade 150. If you have any questions about it, let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you out as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching. So here it is. Hopefully I got the camera angled right so you can see it. I'll go ahead and arm it. And like I said, you can let this take off out of your hands. It's not really too scary. Just kind of throw it. Whoops.